Good morning students. This is your teacher Neela Malavath and today we'll be talking about a very interesting topic that is named incomplete dominance. Now before we come to the topic let's revise a bit. We've talked about the contrasting characters the contrasting traits that mendel studied so how many traits we have studied or how many traits mendel proposed seven very good right the first is stem height which talks about either the plant is tall or the plant is dwarf second is flower color violet or white third flower position whether the flower is axial or terminal fourth is pod shape which is inflated and constricted pod color either the pod is green or yellow seed shape the seed is round or wrinkled seed color the seed is yellow or the green right and we've talked about all the crosses in detail let's revise a bit which we have done let's take up the first character that is the stem height there are two possibilities one is the plant is the plant is the plant is tall or the dwarf right the plant is tall or the dwarf let's see what we have done suppose if the plant is tall we take it as capital t capital t and if the plant is dwarf we take it as small t small t yes now during gamete formation only one of the t that is out of these two t's only one t will be expressed right out of these two t's only one will be there during the gamete formation and from this only this one t will be available okay in f1 generation what will happen this t and this t will combine resulting in capital t and small t that is a hydrozygote zygous state is reached right where both the alleles are different and what will be the phenotype of such a plant tell me what is the phenotype okay tell me what is phenotype then phenotype means the external appearance the appearance of the plant the appearance of plant will be tall all the plants will be tall right now why all the plants were tall we have studied the explanation who will tell me tell me the explanation okay i'm repeating it this t which is present does not allow this small t to function right this capital t does not allow this small t to function right so your small t is not functioning so who is functioning the capital t is functioning now since capital t is functioning the plant will become tall so we can conclude that for a plant to be tall at least one of the t capital t must be present right for a plant to be tall at least one capital t must be present but a plant that is to be short both the t's should be small t right so we can conclude that this t is completely dominant over the small t right this t is 
completely dominant over the small d. This is what exactly Mendel concluded, right? And he gave the law, law of dominance. Okay, do you remember? Right. Now coming to the phenomena of incomplete dominance. Let's take up the incomplete dominance now. Now in this phenomena, apart from Mendel, there were many other scientists who were carrying out the experiments. They also repeated the experiment of Mendel. And they observed that in case of a plant named snapdragon, in case of a plant named snapdragon, which is also called the dog flower, okay, they observed that sometimes the F1 had a phenotype, this F1 generation had a phenotype that did not resemble that did not resemble any of the characteristics that is present in the parents i'm repeating when experiments were carried out on snapdragon which is called also known as the dog flower scientists observed that that the f1 generation had a phenotype which did not resemble any of the parents okay rather it was a blending of both the parents rather it was a blending of both the parents right this phenomena was called incomplete dominance let's study it one of the parents is red so we'll designate red by capital R, capital R. Correct? Because red is dominant over the white color. This is generally what we assume. And white color is shown with small r, small r as per the Mendel's laws. So one of the parents is capital R, capital R and the red. Phenotype is red. While another second plant flower is white, small r, small r. Now during gamete formation, what will happen? During gamete formation, what will happen? Only one of the r's will be present in the gamete. Okay. So this is one r is here and here small r. Now in F1 generation, both these alleles or you can say these, these gametes, they will unite to form a diploid organism that is capital R capital R right this is the genotype of the individual capital R capital R but the phenotype is that the parent will be that the individual will be that the children will be they are pink in color right I just talked about this does not resemble any of the parent Okay, this does not resemble any of the parent. One of the parents is red, another parent is white. But the children are pink in color. So there is blending of both the colors. Blending of both the colors means the red and pink. They have been blended together in the F1 generation and the color is pink. Okay. Right. Now, we'll self-pollinate this. Self-pollinate means R, R will be crossed with R, R. Right? When we cross these two plants with each other and when we allow this, this plant for self-pollination. Okay. So, again, we will have two types of gamete. One is capital R, another is small r. Okay, we'll have two types of gamete. One is capital R, another is small r. So we'll write the gametes on this part and another gametes on this part. So the gametes are capital R, capital R and the gametes are 
here also the gametes are capital r cap small r now we know how to calculate this is this square is called the punnett square and we will calculate or will combine these gametes to form the diploid organisms in f2 generation and we see four individuals will be formed okay one having the genetic composition one having the genetic composition capital r capital r okay and the two are having the genetic composition capital r small r capital r small r and the th last one has genetic composition small r small r very good so we see the capital r capital r what type of phenotype this plant will have it will be red in color and these two plants which are heterozygous in condition they will be pink in color and this individual having the genetic constitution small r small r will be white in color so our phenotypic ratio becomes 1 2 1 so phenotypic ratio becomes 1 to 1 1 is red to a pink and one is white and our genotypic ratio is genotypic ratio is 1 to 1 very good now what do you observe just observe both the ratios are they same or they different they are same very good and what about the mendel in case of mendel in mono hybrid cross was the ratio same or different in case of tall and ah yes tell me they were different in case of complete dominance this phenotypic ratio was same that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 this phenot sorry the phenotypic genotypic ratio was same 1 is to 2 is to 1 <clears throat> let's talk about genotypic ratio again i'm repeating the genotypic ratio was same that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 okay but the phenotypic ratio was different the ratio was 3 ratio 1 3 tall 1 short have you understood the difference in mendel's experiments the phenotypic ratio was 3 is to 1 and the genotypic ratio was 1 is to 2 is to 1 but in case of incomplete dominance the genotype and phenotype ratio are same that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 right now it's, is it clear to everyone good let's come to the next one let's understand why this happened why in case of snap dragon we are observing the incomplete dominance we are not observing the complete dominance okay let's see this we know that one gene has two members how many members a gene has a gene has two members right and these two members are called the alleles right these two members are called the alleles right now there could be two possibilities one is either both both the alleles are same both the alleles are same means either they are tt or they are small t yes so both the alleles are same so we call it as homozygous we call it as homozygous hum use homozygous kab kahenge when both the members or you can say when both the alleles are 
of same type right and when both the alleles are of different type that is capital t small t both the alleles are different type or we can say just now we have taken an example of red and pink so rr is your homozygous and capital r small r is your heterozygous condition clear where both the alleles are of different type yes are we clear with this concept yes so now we know one gene has two alleles if both the gene alleles are same homozygous condition if both the alleles are different heterozygous condition right let's come to the functional aspect now coming to the functional aspect we know when a gene is normal okay when a gene is there is a normal gene okay so this gene will have the information to make an enzyme clear this gene will what the what is the function of this gene that will it will make an enzyme okay so if gene is normal we will have a normal enzyme right and what is the function of the enzyme the enzyme acts on a particular substance and that substance we call as substrate okay so enzyme acts on a particular substance and that substance is called the substrate so we'll now refer to it as a substrate okay so enzyme will act on the substrate and convert it into a product called p clear this will happen when the gene is normal right we have a normal gene we have a normal enzyme the enzyme will act upon the substrate and the substrate will be converted into a product this is a normal working of a gene right let's see what happens when a gene gets modified maybe some natural factor maybe due to mutation or some other reason okay so we will have the modified alleles when we are saying a gene is modified means we are there is modified alleles clear so we will have three possibilities we will have three possibilities that the modified allele can function as it can give you a normal enzyme if the modification is not a very big one not a very drastic one so you will get the normal enzyme and if there is normal enzyme the enzyme will act upon s that is your substrate and will convert into product this is the first possibility coming to the second suppose the modification in the allele <coughs> is not very small okay and it leads to the formation of a non functional enzyme agar allele mein itna change hua hai ki aapka jo enzyme prepare ho raha hai wo functional nahi hai wo kaam nahi kar raha hai theek hai agar enzyme kaam karta hai to wo substrate se product banata hai lekin enzyme kaam nahi kar raha it's not working enzyme has been made okay enzyme has been made but the enzyme is not working so we so substrate is present but substrate will not be converted into product are we clear with this enzyme bana hai lekin enzyme working condition mein nahi hai to agar hamara enzyme working condition mein nahi hai to hamara substrate product mein convert nahi hoga let's take up the third possibility <clears throat> in this case the modification in the allele is so drastic that the enzyme has not been made ab aapke allele mein itna drastic change ho gaya hai 
कि उस जीन से एंजाइम प्रोड्यूस ही नहीं हुआ राइट right? तो अगर एंजाइम नहीं है तो सबस्ट्रेट को प्रोडक्ट में कन्वर्जन भी नहीं होगा क्लियर मैं एक बार फिर से रिपीट कर रही हूं ऑल द थ्री पॉसिबिलिटीज पहला अगर नॉर्मल एंजाइम बनता है तो नॉर्मल एंजाइम एक्ट करेगा और सबस्ट्रेट को प्रोडक्ट में कन्वर्ट करेगा दूसरा एंजाइम बनता है एंजाइम इज बीन प्रोड्यूस्ड बट फंक्शन नहीं कर रहा है तो सबस्ट्रेट प्रोडक्ट में कन्वर्ट नहीं होगा तीसरा एंजाइम प्रोड्यूस ही नहीं होता तो जब एंजाइम प्रोड्यूस ही नहीं होगा सो अगेन सबस्ट्रेट प्रोडक्ट में कन्वर्ट नहीं होगा एंड वी कैन कंक्लूड थ्री थिंग्स फ्रॉम दिस वन द फिनोटाइप डिपेंड्स ऑन द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द मॉडिफाइड अली Now in this case, this modified allele is responsible for the phenotype. Okay, phenotype means your external appearance. Okay. Secondly, unmodified allele जो है हमने first case में देखा कि normal enzyme बन रहा है तो यहां पर मॉडिफाइड अलील जो है वो अनमॉडिफाइड अलील के इक्विवेलेंट है क्योंकि नॉर्मल फंक्शन हो रहा है जनरली ये डोमिनेंट अलील होती है मींस जिस जीन में मॉडिफिकेशन के बाद भी वो वही काम कर रही है जो उसे करना चाहिए वो वही फिनोटाइप प्रोड्यूस कर रही है जो उसे पर करना प्रोड्यूस करना चाहिए ऐसी अलील को हम कहते हैं डोमिनेंट अलील क्लियर सेकेंडली इन केस केस नंबर टू एंड थ्री अलील में मॉडिफिकेशन है और एंजाइम की एक्टिविटी हेम्पर हो रही है राइट सो दैट मॉडिफाइड अलील्स is generally a recessive allele is generally a recessive allele okay so unmodified allele is your dominant allele in most of the cases or you can say generally and modified allele is your recessive allele clear are we clear with the concept yes So this is how this incomplete dominance is believed to have come from the complete dominance because here at least one of the alleles has be, become modified and that is hampering the activity of the or you can say that is hampering the phenotype okay is it clear to everyone very good very good let's talk about your homework for today so your homework is first you will write the whole concept or you can say prepare notes of incomplete dominance you will read second you will read the page numbers 76 and 77 of your ncrt okay and third is you will solve or you can write the question number 13 of exercise so i'm giving you three work one first is make note of this topic in your notebook second to read the page numbers 76 and 77 of ncrt and third is third is to complete the question numbers 13 of exercise yes okay 
now let's discuss a few questions which have come from the this topic in your board exams we'll talk about let's talk about the three questions that i've listed okay let's take up the first question the first question says in incomplete dominance in incomplete dominance okay we got to choose from these options the phenotype of both the alleles is expressed just now we have discussed in f1 generation incomplete dominance mein kya hota hai in f1 generation kisi bhi parent ki phenotype nahi aati hai bas uski blending aati hai mix ho kar aata hai so phenotype both alleles is expressed is it correct or wrong it's wrong second phenotype of only one allele is expressed no again wrong phenotype of neither of the alleles is expressed again wrong phenotype of both the alleles is partially expressed yes capital r and small r both are expressing themselves but they are expressing partially because if r would have been expressing fully it would have been complete dominance but here we are observing incomplete do dominance so your answer is d second question in case of incomplete dominance the mono hybrid ratio in f2 generation is 1 is to 1 is it a genotype ratio tell me whether it's a genotype ratio no only genotype ratio no is it a phenotype ratio only the phenotype ratio no is it both genotype and phenotype yes so you have third option is correct let's see the question number 3 in incomplete dominance heterozygotes exhibit which of the following incomplete dominance mein heterozygotes in mein se kya character ko express karte hain that is your capital r and small r both alleles together independently sorry first one allele no both the alleles are expressed both alleles together independently no both alleles simultaneously blended blended together yes so your option number 3 is correct right i hope students you understood the topic and this concept is clear to you right so you will complete your questions and you will send your homework or your queries to me if there is any and you will practice this topic while sitting at home and enjoying the social distancing okay okay students bye everyone